welcome back folks to the last video of Chem 121 for the fall. Aren't you happy? All right, so the yeah, um, topic of today's video is going to be an introduction to hybrid orbitals. Now, in order to understand hybrid orbitals, we have to understand firstly that when we're talking about a covalent bond, we have to realize that of course electrons have to be shared in that type of bond. All right? In order for electron sharing to happen between two atoms, it seems reasonable then that orbitals have to overlap for that electron sharing to occur. So a very simple way of looking at this is just through the simple orbital overlap that should happen if I want to make a hydrogen molecule or H2. So this is a simple covalent bond existing between two hydrogen atoms as we see. So we've drawn diagrams like this before, where each hydrogen atom has a 1s configuration. All right. So the driving force here is for each one to look like helium, which means that we have to have a 1s2 configuration. We can do that by allowing the two hydrogen atoms to share the electron pair as a bonding pair. That way each hydrogen can lay claim to the pair and take on a helium configuration. Now, in order for this to happen, what we can sort of visualize this as is an overlap between a 1s orbital of one hydrogen and a 1s orbital of the other hydrogen. So we know that a 1s orbital has sort of a uh, spherical type shape. So we can imagine a meshing of those two spheres where the meshing of the spheres results in the electron pair um, sharing. Okay, so you can see sort of one sphere sort of melding into another by way of this orbital overlap. So this is a fairly simple example to look at to get the concept of how orbital overlap is needed to allow that electron sharing to happen. But what about something that's a little bit more sophisticated? How about something like methane, CH4, where there's a little bit more to the bonding process? So what I have to think about here is what electrons are involved? What valence electrons coming from what atoms? So we know that in this molecule I've got four hydrogens. Each hydrogen, of course, is going to have a 1s electron that's going to have, or rather a 1s orbital, that's going to have a single 1s electron in it, just like we did back here in the case of the H2. Now, what about the valence electrons for carbon? Well, we know that carbon is going to have a total of four valence electrons. We're going to have a full 2s orbital if we look at an orbital diagram here, and then a partially filled set of 2p orbitals. So if we kind of look at this, we can see that we actually have room for these four hydrogen electrons to come in and share within the p orbitals. So if you look at this, I can take a total of one, two, three, four, five, six electrons into the p orbital, I've already got two from the hydrogen, so I have room for four more. So technically speaking, I could bring this electron in right here, I could bring this electron in right here, and then I still have room for these other two electrons in this last unfilled or unpopulated P orbital. So technically, I have enough room through orbital overlap to um, account for give homes to all of those hydrogen electrons through the bonding process. When we do that, of course, each hydrogen will then take on a helium configuration, and we see that carbon, because it now has a full set of two p orbitals, will take on a neon configuration. So it's next to the of gas. The problem with this setup is that we have a problem with regard to bond angle. So if we remember how p orbitals look, so I'm focusing on the carbon p orbitals here. Remember that we have orbitals that look like dumbbells that extend out along the x, y, and z axes. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to show you two of these. All right, so we've got the p, y orbital going up and down, and we have the p, x orbital going side to side along the x axis here. Now, if we bring s orbitals in, and we let them overlap with these, I'll just show you two so you can get the picture of how this might work. I could bring my hydrogen s orbital in like so, I can bring another hydrogen S orbital in, like so. So each one of these represents a hydrogen coming in. And we can get our electron sharing happening through that orbital overlap. In other words, the lobe of the P orbital actually overlapping with the sphere of the hydrogen S orbital. Now if you look at this, what sort of a bond angle or geometry does this then represent? So since we're actually stuck within our Cartesian coordinates here, that bond angle is going to turn out to be 90 degrees, okay? So my bond angle in this case will turn out to be 90 degrees. That's defined by the geometry 
of the px and the py and even the pz orbitals. They're all going to be 90 degrees relative to each other. Okay, so this is problematic, right? Because if I think about this, we know that based on VSEPR, CH4 ought to have a tetrahedral geometry, where we're talking about bond angles of roughly 109 degrees. That's what we should have. Okay, so this model really doesn't work for us. So we need to modify this model. We're going to talk about overlapping orbitals to form bonds. So what we do is we're going to fix this by introducing the concept of hybrid orbitals. All right. So here's the deal. If I look at a straight up carbon atom in terms of an electron uh, orbital diagram, what I'm going to see is that I've got, should be a 2s. I've got a 2s orbital and I've got a set of 2p orbitals here. Those are my valence orbitals that I've got for carbon. All right? Now here's what I'm going to do. What I need to do is somehow arrange these in such a way that all those orbitals are equivalent, so now I can force them into the geometry that I want to force them into. So I'm going to make hybrids. Now when I hybridize anything, right, a hybrid is going to have characteristics of both things that came together to make the hybrid. So for example, I believe that a horse and a donkey can mate to generate a mule. Isn't that right, Sam? Okay, so a mule has characteristics of both a horse and a donkey, but it's not a horse and it's not a donkey, okay? So maybe a horse's ass, but hey, I didn't say that. All right. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same kind of thing here. What I want to do is I'm going to actually make a hybrid between the 2s orbital and the set of 2p orbitals, so that now the set of hybrids is going to have some characteristics of the 2s orbital, and it's going to have some characteristics of the 2p orbital. All right, that's what we're going to see. So from an energetics point of view, what I really need to do is maybe raise the energy of the 2s a little bit and decrease the energy of the two p orbitals a little bit so that they can match up. Okay, so ultimately then what I'll make is something that's sort of in the middle between these from an energetic perspective, where now I have one, two, three, four new orbitals, all with the same energy but now they kind of have some S character associated with them and also some P characteristic associated with them. So they look a little bit like an S orbital, a little bit like a P orbital, but it's not an S orbital and not a P orbital. Okay, so we call those hybridized orbitals and we notice that now they are all degenerate, all of the same energy. Alright, so what does a hybrid orbital between an S and a set of P orbitals look like? Well, it looks a little bit like this. Okay, so what I'm going to have is a little bit of S density here left over. And then what I'm going to have is a big lobe that kind of looks like the lobe of a P orbital coming around like that. Okay, so you can notice it still has some S character. And then it has the P character is characterized by that larger lobe like you would see for a P orbital. So that's what a hybridized S P orbital would look like. So it's got some S character and it's got some P character associated with it. Okay? So now if you look at this, now we can actually house all those electrons that we had to house. Because remember, we had four coming in from the hydrogen, and we had four from the carbon. So now that gives us a total of eight valence electrons in CH4, which is exactly what we know from doing the Lewis structure. How do we put them in here? Well, we populate them as we normally would. You know, one, two, three, four, spread them out first, then go back and pair. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so when we do that, now the carbon looks like neon, and each hydrogen now is going to look like helium. Okay, so we've satisfied the requirements for the Lewis structure. So now what we can do is we can take those four hybridized orbitals, and we can kind of arrange them around the carbon atom, kind of like the party balloons that we talked about. So now we can use this to generate the um, geometry that we need to generate, which would be the tetrahedral. So we kind of arrange the orbitals here in a tetrahedral fashion. Okay, so there's my um, four hybridized SP orbitals that I got up here that came from the 2S and the 2P being hybridized. And now what I can do is I can bring the hydrogen unhybridized 1s orbitals in, just like I did before here. So now I'm going to make a little sphere on the end of either one of these that corresponds to an unhybridized hydrogen 1s. Put my 
shared electrons in there. And now we actually have CH4 at the correct bond angle of 109.5 degrees. We'll call it 109 degrees here. Okay? So there's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen, and of course the carbon is here in the middle with prescribed bond angles. Now, when we see something like this, we have a name for it. Because I hybridized a 2s and a set of 2p's together, I used a total of four orbitals, right? So now, the name of this is going to be an sp3 set of orbitals. Okay? So in this case, we would actually say that the carbon, since that's where the orbitals came from, is sp3 hybridized. Okay, so my carbon, which I'll come in here and point out, We'll say is SP3 hybridized. And again, we didn't have to hybridize the hydrogens at all. We could just use these simple 1s orbitals there to come in and overlap now with um, the SP3 lobes that I've got. So now what I've got is a bonding scheme that makes sense. It lets me actually accommodate all the bonds I got to make, and it does so in the prescribed geometry of tetrahedral in the case of um, CH4. So what we're going to do in class is we're going to expand upon this and look at some even more complex bonding that happens. And we're going to show that we can have several variations of hybridization that we can work with. All right, so we'll see you in class next time.